Welcome back to the Blue Bench. Today I have the driver side, passenger side window switches to a 2006 BMW Z4. The problem is that the window driver's passenger side will roll down, but it will not roll up. Now if you keep clicking, 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 clicking on the switch, a few times it has gone up. Um, more often than not, nothing. Now, when you listen to it, you don't hear anything inside the door. There's no nothing wrong with the regulator inside there. By the way, as far as I can tell, because I'm new to this, I'm not an auto mechanic, uh, the regulator has nothing to do with being like a voltage regulator. It is just the slide track for bringing the window up and down. And my assumption reason why it's called the regulator is because you have a couple cable drives that are going from the motor to two sides of the window and maybe they're saying it regulates how smoothly the window goes up and down and not tipping. Anyways, that part is about close to $300 on Amazon and uh, apparently if you hear some grinding inside of there then that's probably a problem. I do not hear any kind of grinding. I hear if you roll the window down and you hit the down button to go down further you hear some tick 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 like the motor's trying to work. That's typical. But when you try to go up nothing no click no nothing no dimming of any lights to signify that there's a load on the system uh, you know nothing like that so it kind of seems like the switch alright now another thing that I read in the forum if you're having the same problem and you, and you, and you maybe take out the switch or you mess around with it and, and you're trying to you know or like in my case it was the passenger side so you go t to the driver side and you're like okay well maybe the driver side switch is broken so you go over and you try the switch on the passenger side and it doesn't work either so you mentally rule out the switches being the problem because why would they both go bad at the same time well what I have found out is with the multiple uh, multi switches say that you have a two door four door whatever and you're the driver's seat and you have uh, the switch up front here for you know controlling the back and front windows and everything and kid lockout switches and such if one switch goes bad they can all go bad so keep that in mind that could be a problem as well uh, let's see there is another thing in there as well uh, what the hell? oh yeah so then the other thing too that I that I speculate could be a problem and I have to track this down I as of yet don't know how it functions is that there is an anti, um, you know, finger smash uh, circuit inside the window. So if you were to roll up the window and put your hand in it, it could come up, hit your hand, and it'll go, uh-oh, something's there, and it'll stop. And so this anti-pinch, anti that's what they call it. So there's an anti-pinch mm, something, circuit something, sensor in there. I've heard the word sensor, but as of yet, I can't find or see anything. But that seems to be an issue as well that they say that the anti-pinch sensor could be bad as well and that keeps you from being able to roll it up. The fix, a couple different fixes along the way for that um, have been things like if you hold the window up for something like 10 seconds, it will override the anti-pinch. Okay, in this case, that doesn't have any effect. There's another, uh, you know, automotive, which me dingy thing where you have to turn the car off, turn it on, something like this, hold the switch down, or no, tap, tap, tap four times in a row when it's all the way down, that will reset the position where it's at and then roll it up. I, I speculate that the reason for that is that it gets confused in its travel, maybe it's like setting limit switches on a CNC and then you just bring it down, tap, 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 it knows where bottom is and now it can go back up again. I don't know. None of those things in my case seem to work, but that's, you know, hey, that's my problem. So today we are here to take a look at the guts of uh, these switches because I thought this might be helpful to somebody out there. So if you feel inclined that you want to take a look at the switch or maybe you want to clean it, but you're a little bit disturbed or, or you know, just general FUD that you don't want to maybe dig into it, it's not that bad. It's not that complicated and a switch going bad seems to be 
I, I I mean, I know, I understand that they go bad, but looking at the guts of this, it, it's pretty tough to see that they actually go bad, except for uh, some mechanical components inside of this. So, this right here, so these are your, your standard plastic, you know, kind of self-tappers that just screw in there. Uh, take those out, then you have to do some of the other, um, this crap, pop, pop, pop. Be very, very gentle. Because you have a couple on the side here and you have of course a couple over here you try to pull these ones out you get them started you come over here you do the side and the other side pops back in again so take your time don't break this because if you're like me you might be checking this out to see if it's a bad part and turns out it might be a good part but you just broke the crap out of it because you're getting too rambunctious so be careful so you pull this apart and then here's what we got so you have this, you have your little membrane here. Now be careful dumping this out because on the other side here, I made this mistake, I'll show you. There are um, a, a couple little handful of, oh crud, things that you don't want to fall out. So this, gentle, 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 don't spill this. I found this pretty interesting because see the switch has got a kind of a up down but two position um, oh man come on okay we're back together now so the switch itself has kind of a a, um, a halfway and then a full on button and then if you want it to go down or whatever then you push a little bit forward or all the way so like if you just give it a pop then it'll just roll up all the way all by itself so how does that end up happening and it has absolutely nothing to do with the switch mechanism over here but they've created kind of like a delay uh, mechanical mechanism here to where you get here's your you know on this side would be you know your your um, up and down with so this is the the driver's head right so you have your your up and down tap and your up and down full and depending upon how you push it you'll hit either this set here or this set here then oops over here let me grab some tweezers Here's the mechanism inside here. These just slide out. So if you do drop these, just know that they're all pointing inward here on these rockers. Don't let this thing fall out. This is uh, the slider for the mirror. So on the driver's side, you're gonna have you're gonna have the control for all of your mirrors, left and right, and your um, your window switches. So this is the part that I was most concerned about because I wanted to see if I could find the pin out on the cable for which one goes with which. Okay, so these have little tracks on them and they fit right down in there like so. Boink, boink. So here's the other side of the membrane with your little contacts. Gentle. Then here is the main thing that I wanted to show you. I, I really just wanted to put this on the screen. So if you're um, curious about what's in here or you want to trace it out yourself, screenshot, right here is the schematic for the top of the driver side control board, driver side uh, window control board. Now the other side, there's there's nothing really that's going to fall out of here. There's just some pins here, so you can take this apart like so, and this is nothing there, just a case. So I'll set that off to the side. Then here is the traces. So maybe I'll do a screenshot for you. Here is the here. I'll put it over here. Whatever. I don't think it matters. Here's the back. Here's the front. 
All right, next we'll take a look at the passenger side. So same kind of deal, pull this away from, from the, the, the housing. By the way, this, this um, whatever housing case or whatever that it's in, this is a, kind of a pain to get out of here. I used a little bit, I started trying to use a butter knife but I couldn't get in there and the, what is it, 009317, oh my god, I think I got that number right. There's a little tool that BMW has that you can use to pry all this crap out. If you look at it online, if you happen to have a 3D printer, I do not think it would be a big deal to print that. But honestly, I think you could find some other kind of a tool around the shop. One guy used the spatula, but for this stuff here, you need to pry up a fair amount. I, I want to say it was probably about five millimeters, eight millimeters before I could get it to pop out of the clips. You might do it like uh, releasing molds, you know, that you might prop it up, get something under here, get another thing up here. Like if you could find a bunch of wedges, then you could get it to pop out. It's completely possible, I'm sure, to grab the side here and just rip the crap out of it, but then I think, of course, you risk damaging something over here. But yeah, that's how you do that. And this switch does fit right up inside there. So I, I wasn't certain if that was going to get damaged in the tearing this out, but it should just come right out through this hole. Sorry, this whole thing will come out when you pop this out and then you can pull that out. It just drops out. Okay. Oh, here, let's do that. Here, let's hold all this junk on here. Nope, wrong side. Here is the model number, if you're looking for that. This is the driver's side. Uh, again, it's a 2006 BMW Z4. This is the passenger side. Okay. Window switch. Now the same deal with this one here, pop this out here. I was actually able to pop one side out pretty good and then I was able to just pry the thing out like so. So then the same deal, there you have your contacts, that down there. So mechanically there isn't really a hell of a lot to go wrong other than I guess wearing out. You know, if if you've got kids or you've got a really bad problem, you know, uh, how many times are you hitting this switch that you could get that to wear down? All the same, though, uh, we do spill our coffees on them. We do, you know, uh, get them kind of clogged up over time. So maybe take this out, clean it all up, because maybe it's kind of sticky. You might go ahead and, of course, use some isopropyl alcohol Probably soap and water isn't going to get you very far. It's not, I mean, if you let it dry, it's fine, right? But uh, um, isopropyl, actually, I take that back. Um, you might not know this, but isopropyl alcohol does not uh, at all dissolve sugar. So if you're driving with your latte and it sloshes around a little bit, it's getting in your switches here, the IPA isn't really going to do a good job of cleaning that. So you're probably going to want to soak it in some water, clean it all up, let it dry, then maybe hit it with some IPA because water doesn't do a good job with all of the extra sticky, greasy stuff. So hit it up with both if you feel you have to. Then here is the contact board and it should just drop out like so. And then all we have is a little, um, shoot, some pads here, an LED, and I'm sure that that is just the resistor for the LED. And I can't tell because it's tiny, but it does look like it connects to the resistor, so maybe, what, a diode in there? I don't know. Can't quite see. Yeah, it looks kind of to be a diode. So anyway, that's it. So take a take a look at this. This is a white solder mask, so I'll do my best to try to get the reflection so where you can kind of see the traces. I'll just move it around a little bit and you screenshot where you believe you need to. That's pretty good. Okay, and then here is the other side.
So back, and then the front. Well, I hope you found this helpful for whatever you might be working on troubleshooting. For me, it was the windows. Maybe this will help you with the mirrors as well. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think this is going to solve my problem because everything in here looks to be pretty robust outside of, you know, you spill in a whole pile of goop on here and it's just so clogged up that, uh, you know, that it doesn't function, you know, mechanically or maybe electronically, but I think a little bit of water and or IPA will, will help you solve just about any of that. So for me, I'm moving on down to the next thing, probably the anti-pinch mechanism switch thing, whatever that might be. So maybe I'll let you know what I find out later down the road. Thanks, everyone. All right, I don't know if I'm going to get this to show up or not, but this is the motor here on my broken-ass window. If you're desperate to get the thing to go roll up, there is no nut, there is no anything on here like on other windows to get this thing to go up. And if you're having a problem with the switch or you don't know what it is or it might be in something somewhere or even if you want to test out if it's the, the slide track here regulator BS, right? If you cut these thicker wires on the bottom here, these appear to be the ups and the downs. All the rest is probably for sensing and and uh, there is a um, uh, anti-pinch thing that's in here so it's probably one of here checking the uh, the amperage on it to see what the draw is to see if there's something stuck in it if it needs to stop if you cut all this BS here and just know that you're gonna shrink solder and shrink wrap all this later then you can do this well you can do it if you like and duct tape it I don't care but see if I can hold this the camera and everything gently stuff that in here window down now reverse polarity gently window up so what is this magic anyways this is a 4s lipo battery um, if you're an FPV pilot or if you know one you'll recognize these uh, these are they kick out about 14 volts so that's that's about what the car needs that's I've seen probably just about exactly this about 14.7 volts coming out of this thing here and this will deliver 75 C theoretically if they're not lying to us so it's definitely enough to get the thing to go up and down so if you have one of these around and your window happens to be broken and you want to get it rolled up because it's about to rain maybe give this try